And by many accounts, John English does have the world on a string. The Frank Sinatra tribute artist may have caught your ear before, perhaps at the Portland airport where he's entertained passengers for years, or in Las Vegas. His voice has earned him performances on stages throughout the country. I used to do a lot of singing with the jazz band, so I'd wear a tux and, get, and I'd sing. And one lady came up to me one time, a mom, she says, you sound just like Frank Sinatra, did you know that? And I didn't even think about it. But when you're listening to a lot of the records, you, you, things just kind of get put into your brain. The 60-year-old father makes it look easy. You'd never know the path to where he is today took many painful turns. I don't think most people think, well, I'm going to be homeless someday or I'm going to be, you know, trying to f in a big transitional mode where I'm, I'm not sure where I'm going to be uh, living. At 18 years old, John was a bright-eyed high school graduate in California, eager to serve his country. He enlisted in the Marines in 1974. John was eventually stationed in Okinawa, Japan, where he served as a radio operator for five years. During his active duty, his ability to sing like Sinatra earned him special performances for the USO. You know, wanted to serve my country, you know, do something positive, and then, you know, I thought of re-enlisting, but then I decided to get out and pursue my music career. He was honorably discharged in 1980 and pursued a hard-earned career as a Sinatra tribute artist in Oregon, where he met his wife and eventually had a son. I was married and we got divorced, and I basically took on the, the role of raising my son on my own. And uh, so, yeah, I've been pretty much raising him on my own since he was a year old. He uh, has uh, Down syndrome and nonverbal, so we both use sign language to communicate. As a single father, John relied on friends, community programs, and his career to get by, but fell on hard times. He and his son became homeless. I don't think anybody imagines that, hey, in five years from now, I'm gonna be sitting in a hotel um, wondering where I'm going. And we found out about Northwest Pilot Project and we met Elizabeth and she was able to help us to uh, dovetail into a, uh, a hotel for a while until we could start looking around for a place to live. Through a partnership with the Veterans Administration and the Department of Housing and Urban Development, John was able to sign up for a rental assistance voucher. At that point, on, it was on my own that I had to go out and knock on doors and say, hey, I'm looking for a you know, one to two bedroom. Uh, I'm in a veteran program and this is, here's a letter that kind of explains a little bit what, what that is. John has a fantastic story, a fantastic story about how far he's been able to come with the support that he received from the community under this effort to end veterans homelessness. That is a story that we want to be able to tell for every single homeless veteran in our community. Multnomah County, the city of Portland, and the many partners with the Home for Everyone are working to house every homeless veteran by the end of 2015. But a low vacancy and high demand rental market is one of the challenges. But a lot of the veterans who have been on the streets, who have had sometimes many years of experience of being homeless, really also can have some things in their background that make it challenging for them to find to find apartments. We're asking that that landlord not to look so much at the past but to look at where that veteran is headed and what is it that that veteran is bringing and importantly what are the support services that that veteran has. In exchange for giving veterans a first shot at a vacant unit, a package of support is being offered including security deposits, financial assistance for past due rent, tenant damage, move out expenses, and a landlord response team for urgent issues. When Eric and I came out to meet with Tom, the landlord here, uh, we basically shared with him my story. Uh, and uh, of course, I you know, came with my wearing a suit. So when you, when you put your best foot forward and you start to talk to some of these people, they look at you as being sincere. And this person cares about where he's going to live. Now John and his son have a spacious two bedroom apartment, a place they can call their own. I think the ones that are, are out there that, you know, if they're homeless or if they're in a shelter or if they're with, staying with somebody, that finding a permanent housing is not just a dream, it's reality. That you can, you can make that a reality by tapping into the resources. Thank you.